All right, distributed property. I know, we still have not got to factory, but I'm telling you, this is probably one of the most important lessons for I want you to be able to visualize what we're doing so you can start to see why it is we're trying to factor and what we are looking for. I kind of forgot some parentheses here. So what we need to do is remember the kind of two rules for distributed property. If I have A times B plus C, remember this A needs to multiply by the B and the C. So this would be AB plus an AC. And then furthermore, yeah, we'll get to that. But what I want you to see here is factoring is basically the process of going from here to there, right? So we're gonna practice going from here to here, but what I want you to be able to see is once each and every time that I apply distributive property to each of these problems, what I want you to see is look at the answer and kind of look backwards, kind of follow that process backwards because that's where students get hung up with factoring. When we get into the next lesson, we're gonna do factoring. We're gonna get right into it, right? And I have some lessons, I have tons of example problems, but I want you to be able to see we're working forward. Practice or factoring is going to be the process of working backwards from the distributive property. So in this first example, I have three times x minus two. We're gonna multiply three times x and three minus two. So therefore I'll have a three x minus a six. And again, remember what I said, if I wanted to factor three x minus six, what would that look like? It would look like this, three times an x minus two. We'll talk more about that later. But I want you to be able to see, again, I have a monomial times a binomial. I need to multiply everything times everything. Remember numbers multiplied by numbers, variables multiplied by variables. So therefore this is going to be a six, x squared and a 2x times 5. I can only multiply the 5 times a 2, so it's going to be a positive 10x. Now we get into a trinomial. I don't have anything for a trinomial here, right? But the distributive property still works, ladies and gentlemen. What we're simply going to do is multiply the 4 times everything and the x times everything. You could also use FOIL. You can use the FOIL phase. There's a lot of techniques that we use to help students remember. But this is about factoring, so I'm hopefully assuming that you probably already know this. I just want you to visualize what happens when we multiply a binomial times a binomial that looks something like this. Because there's something interesting about this. It's the exact same numbers, except one's negative and one is positive. So negative four times x is a negative four x. Negative four times four is going to be a negative 16. x times x is going to be a x squared and x times four is going to be a positive four x. So the one thing I want you to recognize here is when I go ahead and simplify this, oops, sorry, that's a plus x squared. When I go ahead and simplify this, I can say, well, I have an x squared, right? What about my x's? Well, negative four x and positive four x, those are going to add to zero. So I don't have any x terms. And then I have a negative 16. That looks very similar to that example I showed you with those little boxes. Remember the x squared minus one? This is going to be an x squared minus 16. What about a problem over here? So again, just follow the same steps. Now typically I always like to multiply the first two terms first. That's gonna be our FOIL, so we do first. So 2x times a 5x is going to be a 10x squared. And then we do first outer, so we do 2x times uh, negative one, which would be your outer terms. 2x times negative one is going to be a negative 2x. Then we do our inner, negative one times 5x is going to be a negative 5x. And then we do our last, so we do inner, Last, negative one times negative one is going to be a positive one. Now, the big thing that happens to students, and the reason why I had to spend some time doing this with you guys, is because when I teach factoring or I make a video about how to do factoring, it is like, without a doubt, students will always ask, where did this number go? Like, what happened to that number? Like, how to just eliminate? Nothing is being eliminated, ladies and gentlemen. When I go ahead and simplify this, right, the negative four X and the four X, those added to zero, right? It didn't eliminate, I didn't just like poof and it's gone. But the, when I combine them, when I simplify them, that is how I got the zero X or no middle term. Over here, when I go to simplify this, negative two X minus a five X is a negative seven X, right? So when you go to simplify there, these are the only two terms that I can go ahead and simplify. I can't combine everything with the 10x squared. I can't combine anything with the one. These two terms though can simplify. So my final answer is a 10x squared minus a 7x plus one. And guess what? We're gonna learn how to factor from here to there. Sometimes you could do it in your head, but this might be a little bit difficult, but I want you to be able to see, this is very, very important because we're gonna get to this. So if I don't study it, if I don't teach it now, then when I'm teaching factoring, I have to go back to it and be like, oh, here's how this works. Notice a 10X squared minus seven X plus one. If I was to work my way backwards, notice how negative seven X, I can break that up into a negative two X and a negative five X. Then I can factor things out. It's just a very important concept of this idea of distributed property and factoring is just going to be the reverse of that. Now in the last one, I threw in three terms because it's important for you to recognize when we need to do distributed property, we wanna work one thing at a time. So I have a two times x minus one times x plus two. 
Now, thankfully, multiplication is cumulative, so it doesn't matter which one you do first. I would just maybe recommend doing your two binomials first, and then whatever scalar you have, then to go and do that. Or whenever you have like three binomials, if you know, you're know you moving on to something more advanced, just pick two at a time, and then multiply everything by the third one. So. I'm gonna do two times. Now let's multiply this out. X, now I'm not gonna show any lines here. We're gonna kind of pick it up. X times X is an X squared. X times two is going to be a positive two X. Negative one times X is a negative X. And negative one times two is going to be a negative two. Now, if there wasn't a video that was a little educational, I would probably simplify that in my head and write it down, but I don't know where you're at. So that's why I'm gonna work it in a little bit slower. So X squared, let's see, plus X minus two. Now I can apply my distributive property. So we're doing a lot of work here. And that is gonna give us a two X squared plus a two X minus a four. And what's reason, what the reason why this is important that I want you to be able to see is when we're factoring, one thing we're always trying to do is trying to say, all right, is there anything in common that all of my terms have that I can first factor that out? And again, when I say the word factor, I'm saying rewrite the expression as multiplication. See what happens here? I multiply the two times each and every one of these terms. When I'm given this problem and I wanna factor it, what I'm basically doing is dividing each of these terms by two because all of these terms share a common factor, right? Remember first video? They share a common factor of two because two is divisible into each and every one of these terms. So if I divide out a two and rewrite it as multiplication, I can rewrite it like this. Then I would have to go into my factoring techniques of trinomials. Notice how I broke up the X into a two X and a negative X. And again, how am I gonna do that? Well, we're gonna learn that in the upcoming videos. But I just want you to see this process or I want you to start visualizing the idea of what we're trying to achieve with factoring. Going from this term going in the reverse of the distributive property. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to get into factoring on the next video.